Um, but I want to go back to kind of uh, how you started talking about the college football playoff um, and kind of the success or lack thereof that the Pac-12 has had just to, you know, teams in the five years to be in it. Um, and the Pac-12 really is in this weird kind of transition period. Um, the, you know, dom USC dominance of the uh, early 2000s, mid 2000s is over, you know, Stan Stanford's run in the in the early 2010s, um, Oregon, they were, you know, nationally a competitive team um, yeah, for a time. And then obviously Washington making the college football playoff and getting embarrassed by Alabama, which, hey, I love to see. Um, but <laughs> everyone if you loves look, to see that. Of course. Yeah, I'll take that every year. Um, but if you look kind of added a little bit the uh, the pac-12 isn't necessarily as bad on the surface um you know their revenue isn't as bad as you may think like they're actually above uh, i think they're third in revenue for last year um even though the pac-12 network you know nobody really has that um but i think the one of a, the big problems is the fact that you know the pac-12 after dark which we love over here and on the west coast that doesn't get a lot of eyes everywhere else um i know uh, the Pac-12 briefly kind of discussed playing, you know, 9 a.m. games here, um, which is a big market in other places, but just doesn't work logistically um, for kind of the teams and the players. So that is, I mean, at the end of the day, we need more national exposure on this conference. Uh, recruiting definitely helps in getting these better teams, um, which a lot of them recruit kind of on the West Coast. California is big for us, but also we they lose a lot of big recruits to these big these bigger schools everywhere else so i think that if they're able to kind of get that national exposure up and create these better teams then they've got a chance but for now i mean people are going to choose to watch these other conferences and i want to ask a question um kind of that was the second part of this question is how do you think that the scheduling kind of impacts that um the way that kind of the pac-12 schedules um their own games and also non-conference games how do you think that impacts um the level of uh, just importance that the Pac-12 has. Are you talking about the schedule in general or the conference only schedule we had? This is a uh, schedule in, in general in a normal year, not this okay. year. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, well, it's there, there's some Pac-12 teams that kind of get to play those national powerhouses like UW, USC, uh, even UCLA and whatnot. Uh, I think that can kind of spread around across the board. Like, you know, WSU, we were going to play Utah State, Houston, and uh, Idaho, the good old good old Vandals over there. Mm -hmm. And although they're uh, quote unquote wins, I guess for a Power Five school, mm -hmm. you know, I want to see I want to see WSU take on a Big Twelve school. I want to see WSU take on an ACC school or SEC. You know, I want to see uh wc take on another big time powerhouse they do well, have that, they do have wisconsin coming up i believe they've, they've got yeah, some we, we signed that yeah so we got that back-to-back -back year with wisconsin that's good um but i think a problem that comes from that is you know a lot of times they've had these big games but teams don't really want to come to pullman you know wisconsin a lot of times chooses mm -hmm. not or those teams choose not to come to pullman so that's kind of um a disadvantage that I think, you know, so even if, you know, WSU does schedule them, sometimes they run into that issue. And the thing about the Pac-12 is I I consider Pac-12 to be probably the most competitive conference in college football, if I'm being honest. I mean, yes, the SEC gets the most attention with Alabama mm -hmm. and LSU. And I, I get it. They're great. But they're always great. Pac-12, although Oregon is kind of our, our top dog, uh, next year could be Stanford's year, or it could be yep. ASU's year, and then the year after that could be Cal. It could be uh, it could be USC. Uh, I mean, 11 out of the 12 Pac-12 schools these past five years have made the AP poll, except for Oregon State, which, <laughs> go figure. But the point being is that there's always uh, competition. Like, you know, WSU was – a top 25 uh they were in the top 25 for these past couple of years yeah uh for for good reason i'll definitely recognize and now they're kind of getting back up kind of getting back up on their feet so it's always competitive so i definitely think it's deserving national attention it's just mm -hmm. the process of it getting out there 
Yeah, and I think the problem with scheduling is a college football problem uh, at large. I mean, they schedule these games 10 years out. So when you're scheduling, you know, a Houston, maybe they were really good and now they're not. So that's just a kind of a problem in college football as a whole. And you look at Alabama, Alabama doesn't play a lot of competitive non-conference games. They get these great games within their conference, which I think is something that the Pac-12 lacks. I agree with the competitiveness of it and saying that this is an extremely competitive uh, conference, but a lot of the times there's one good team a year. There's usually a team from the Pac-12 that kind of emerges and they don't have these, you know, top five, top 10 marquee matchups. Um, it's kind of, they kind of beat up on each other and then one team emerges. So I think that's another thing too, is they're not going to get these marquee matchups from non-conference, which a lot of people don't, you know, Oregon has been able to schedule some, you know, USC was going to play Alabama this year. There's, there are some good games, but they don't get these huge, you know, non, or they don't get these huge conference games that ESPN goes, Oh, we need to pick this up and show this to everybody. Um, so I think that's, uh, one of the issues that they run into. And I think sometimes the competitive can, competitiveness of the conference can hurt that because you've got, you know, four teams in the top 20, but none in the top 10.